All right, this is another print, another one of many. I've done well over 3,500 uh, STL files, and I'm going to be adding this to the list. Um, as you can see, it's a flat surface at this point. Uh, it will be a fairly large box, so probably about a two-inch box. Um, but the main thing I'm showing here is what it's not doing. It's uh, not curling, not warping, it's not using a brim, it's not using a raft, it's not using messy glue stick that you have to apply and remove, it's not printing on a heated bed as you can see here, the set point for the bed right here is zero, that's the room temperature set point, zero is the, is the set point, it's at room temperature, so it's not asking the, the bed to be heated to uh, reinforce adhesion. Because I print in this fashion, as you see here, you know, as you're seeing right here, is how my printer is printing. And it also does not have a direct drive. No direct drive is needed to print like this. Okay, and you can see it printing right now. I mean, there's nothing I'm hiding. I'm not hiding anything. So basically this is on the fourth layer and it is going as well as it always has. All right? I'm not printing out here, along here, down here, or back there. So when I tram the bed, when I tram, or as some people call it level, because tramming is both leveling and distance, both of those parameters are very important level and distance so you tram the print surface and tramming is printing the bed to the nozzle so that it's at the same distance everywhere you go on the print surface that's very important it's paramount all right i'm not using a metal extruder i'm not using updates that i guess trying to reinvent the wheel. Some people say, oh, I've updated this and changed that and modified that because my printer's having problems. But it's not going to print any better. It might for you because if you're having problems with what the printer is now, then you either haven't assembled it right or not using it properly. So I would say if you update, you're going to have just as many, if not more problems than if you left the printer as it came out of the box. This is your run-of-the-mill, basic workhorse printer. This is the Ender 3. Ender 3 Pro is the same, virtually, but it has a different center, uh, center post right here. You know, the rail's wider. It also just has your basic controller. This is the interface between user and the printer. It's basic. There's nothing to it. It's just a few, you know, uh, menus. You hit the button, you move on. It's not the touch screen and all that, uh, because again, that may or may not be an upgrade, but it's not something that will stop this printer from working. This printer, as you see it, is working right now with your basic, not even a touch screen, basic push button, you know, finding the menus, finding the directives, finding the G code, hitting the button. That's it. All right, you can see here again, this hot end, its only job is to deliver filament from right over here, not up here, right over here, because it gives it a direct path. I mean, some people mount it up there and says, well, just print arms, levers, gizmos, gadgets, and whatever to redirect the filament, when you can mount this right here and not redirect anything. It's like straight in, less friction into the extruder. This extruder will have less problems than any aftermarket extruder seem to have. They all seem to have some issue that you have to deal with that this one will never have. The only issue you might have, and if it is an issue, it's not an issue. You know, some people make it an issue by changing the body to an aftermarket metal extruder. Keep the body, change the arm. All right, because the arm is the only thing that's liable to have issues. It's like three bucks, five minutes, change the arm, go back to printing. 
You don't have to change E-steps, you don't have to change gears, you don't have to change steppers, you don't have to do anything. It's literally remove and replace and print. R, R, and P. Remove, replace, remove, replace, and print. Okay? So, this is your basic printer. This is how printing works. It's filament through some form of extruder because it needs to pull the filament off the spool, feed it down the, the Bowden tube delivery system. This is how filament gets from here to a moving part right here. The Bowden tube works. It's, 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 it's almost amazing how well it works because it just has to get the filament through a moving, you know, while it's moving back and forth onto the table and you can see it working right here. There's nothing between there and here to get it here. It, it's, it's working right now. You can see how smooth uh, the layers are. This was, I think, the fourth layer, maybe. It's now on the fifth layer. And you know by looking at this that the layers below that must be smooth because it's, it's, it's going to show telltale signs of problems of the layers below it. But since this layer is as you see it right now, this layer is going on top of that. It's called fusion. Filament Deposition Modeling, FDM. It's fusing one layer on top of the other. That's, again, how FDM works. The temperature of my nozzle for PLA is 210. My bed, of course, the set point was zero. This is working right now. I do this all the time. And when I discovered that this worked, I, I'm, I've continued to do it on all my printers. I have four of these Ender 3s. Okay, so you can do a lot of printing, you know, in three and a half, four years, 3,500 so far, 3,500 STL files. I've done many of the STL files several times. All right, let's look at the springs. Check that out. Why are those still on this machine? Those are, the, those are the springs that came with it. Because they work. Saying that you're upgrading the springs is not upgrading the print quality. All right? This is showing that it's working now. No issues, no problems. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is it. This is printing now. I mean, uh, I'm not just saying words and walking away. I'm showing it as a video example. I use the tape right here. You can see it for yourself. I use a mirror. You can see it for yourself. The reason is, first off, the mirror is removable between prints. The mirror is flat across its entire surface, known to be flat from the factory. That being the case, you don't need any electronic gizmo to compensate for any highs and lows that might be in whatever surface you're printing on. Whether it's due to warping or bending or this and that. If the surface is already flat, stays flat, known to be flat, then this gizmo is worthless. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to compensate for any errors in the bed because it's already flat. You're not flattening it. Right? The reason I put the tape is more than the reason that people say, oh, you don't need the tape to reinforce adhesion. Okay, maybe not, but that's not exactly why I use it. I use it for more than just adhesion. All right? You can see for yourself the color's blue. You can see the filament is right there. There's a contrast in color. You can actually see for yourself as a user how the tape shows that the filament is almost translucent. You can almost see through it. That's the first layer. The entire first layer will be almost translucent. You can see there'll be no breaks in it. There'll be no uh, spaces or gaps or curling or warping of the filament itself because it's going down flat. It's adhering or it's, I guess, I guess it's, it's staying on the table because again there it is no glue no brim no raft all right I mean I, I, I can't even explain it better than what you can see it